What's up, guys? As you can see, I'm not in my normal office space right now. I'm in my portable office. And what is this in my hand? What is this? Then he say he doesn't drink coffee. Then he say he doesn't buy coffee. What's up with this, man? I know that's what you're thinking right now. I've got answers for you. For one, I actually really do need a coffee this morning. And two, I'm proving a point. This ain't about the normal things that you should cut back on so you can save money. I'm going to completely change the direction that you would expect this video to go in. I'm not focused on the small stuff today. I'm focused on the bigger things that I don't feel get addressed enough. This is going to be one of those videos that hits hard. And yes, that means I'm going to have my foot in somebody today. Y'all going to hear from me, but just know it's all out of love and passion. I want to build you guys up to make the smartest financial decisions you can possibly make. But first, I'm going to sip this coffee. Hmm, not, I ain't even gonna pretend like that's good, brother. It is about nasty and not in a good way. Either. This is what happens when you try to keep up with the cool kids and try to drink the coffee black. All right, I'm not about to stay in this car for this whole video, so I'm about to take you inside so we can continue this conversation. Now, I've seen and heard a lot of nonsense lately, and it's something that I just can't get off my mind. So I'm going to share it with you because I really think it can help you out. So in between me telling you what I don't buy so I can save money, I'm also going to be storytelling so I can give you some perspective. So first of all, I am not spending money on anything I don't want. And I'm going to break this down into three different parts so you can get different scenarios so you know I'm not tripping. If you know anything about me, you know I absolutely despise the party scene. I'm not into clubbing, drinking, or smoking, right? My money is going nowhere near those things. Well, earlier in life, I didn't have the type of strength I have today to walk away from certain situations. Meaning, even though I hated the club and always hated it, if my friends wanted to go, I would tag along with them. And we'd be there for hours and I always felt like I was wasting my time and my money. And honestly, it's not even about the money because it never costed that much to get in. It was the fact that I wasn't happy with the decision to go there in the first place. When it comes to money, you've always got to be in control. And at that time, I wasn't in control. Same thing goes for parties. I mean, I went to a bunch of frat parties, house parties, raves, you name it. I mean, I'm not even gonna lie, I went to a party school. Something you should know about me is I'm an introvert and people drain everything out of me. I'm mainly sociable around people who are like-minded, you know, people who are about something. I just can't get down with everybody and I make that abundantly clear by the vibe I give off, you know, that don't talk to me, move around type of vibe. In a lot of cases, I'd rather be alone to be honest. Anyway, those parties definitely cost some money, alcohol costs some money, and I don't like drinking, so that's time doing stuff I didn't want to do, spending money on stuff I didn't like, all because I told myself, hey man, just chill out. You're just loosening up a little bit, man. It's no big deal. Come on. You're just having a little fun. Have a few more drinks, bro. You've been working hard lately. Subconsciously, I think I just had a fear of missing out on all the fun that would go on, and that's why I went to those places, and that's why I had those drinks. Knowing good and well, I can't stand the taste of alcohol and I'm not the party type. That's just not how I personally have fun. You know what I mean? Like my idea of fun fits a completely different narrative. Now in this case, no one pressured me to do anything. It was me pressuring myself because I convinced myself that this was how to have fun. I did not have fun at all. Unless it was like a house party that I was throwing or close friends were throwing, there was no fun because I don't know y'all. But I say that because if you let anyone, whether it's yourself or someone else, if you let anyone pressure you into doing something that you know for a fact you don't want to do, you lose automatically. You lose the control. That means the standards you have for yourself are broken. That means people know that they can easily talk you into spending time or money doing something or going to a place that you know you don't want to. And on a deep level, you know that too. And for what? For the satisfaction of other people? This is where you've got to be true to yourself. And if someone disagrees, you tell them to kick rocks and blow bubbles. We don't got time for their mess. Your time and money are way too valuable to be spending it, my bad, wasting it on things that you don't even want to be doing. The price doesn't even matter. It's the fact that you spent anything on something that you didn't want to do. Now, I've done this many times, especially in my teenage years, because I just wanted to experience things and see what all of the hype was all about. But the moment you realize you don't like something, the word no needs to become your favorite word. And don't worry about hurting nobody's feelings either. They're going to be all right. And believe me, somebody's going to have something to say about it. You know what I say to that? Let them talk. I can't be concerned with what people are saying about me. 
I'm too busy out here making decisions that better my life. Now this is the big one right here. I absolutely refuse to buy anything to be flashy or to show off. In today's society, we're being completely ruined and finessed out of our money all for the sake of buying things to look rich, only to have nice things externally with nothing in our bank accounts to show for it. I'm talking about the expensive stuff too. I'm talking about Gucci sweaters, Gucci belts, Louis Vuitton, Supreme. I'm talking about the luxury brands. We're gonna take a step beyond the Jordans, Nikes, Adidas, and all that good stuff. I'm talking about the luxurious brands where you can expect to pay $1,000 minimum for a nice shirt. I said this in the video before, how are you going to be walking around with a Louis Vuitton book bag, but you ain't got no books in it though? I'm just going to be real. I am so sick and tired of seeing people spend $1,000, $2,000 on stuff they don't need just to be flashy or to impress people. It's not even the fact that you bought the Gucci sweater. It's the fact that you bought it with money you don't have. Now you're $1,750 in the hole and you have absolutely nothing to show for it in your bank account and you have no assets. Then you have the nerve to look at me with a straight face talking about some stocks are too expensive, man. Man, if you don't go somewhere with that foolishness, then you're so quick to tell yourself, I deserve this. I'm treating myself. Oh, I'm living now. No, you're not. And this is the financial mistake I see a lot. And it doesn't necessarily have to be luxury brands. That's just what I see most commonly nowadays. I just have a really hard time wrapping my head around how it makes any sense for someone in their infinite wisdom to go out and spend an absurd amount of money on something to make it look like they have money only to be left with an empty wallet afterwards. Someone's gonna have to explain that one to me. And don't get me wrong, you have free will plus you've earned your money so you can spend it on whatever you want. That's your right. But when you do everything you want to do with your money without any regards to the future, you don't get to complain about your financial situation. You don't get to complain about the fact that you don't make enough at work. You don't get to kick, scream, and cry about how much you hate your job because you keep doing stuff, for lack of a better term, that keeps you stuck in the position you're in right now. That's what I'm trying to say. Forget about skipping out on the coffee. Ugh. Still about nasty, but it's giving me the energy I need to give the world a piece of my mind right now. It's all for nothing. And it's not just with luxury brands either. Sometimes you see people with excessive jewelry, expensive watches, sometimes even diamonds. You see cars that people know they ain't got no business driving and then they have the nerve to throw a fit and turn the world upside down because gas prices are too high. Meanwhile, your job is paying you a modest salary. So who are you trying to fool? Your coworkers know how much you make, you know how much you make, so I mean, what's the point of even playing this game? You ain't fooling nobody. My biggest problem is this. If I go out and buy one of those nice Gucci sweaters right now, sure, I might turn some heads, I might impress some people, but that bad boy ain't gonna go up in value. It depreciates, but you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up real quick just so y'all know I'm not making up numbers. Now, the amount of money this right here costs is a one-time transaction that you get nothing out of besides looking good. Which is a good thing if you have the money for it, but here's the thing. I look at money so much differently now, especially compared to how I used to look at money as a teenager. I used to view money as, oh, I can buy the stuff I always wanted to now. All the stuff I couldn't afford back in the day, oh, now I can get those. So whenever I did have money, most of it was gone because I was buying things that I wanted. And I'm going to just let you know right now, I've got expensive taste. So that took most out of what I was making. So I had to change my mindset and I had to change the way I viewed money as a whole. Now I view money as a powerful resource that I can use in the future. So the same way I could have spent $1,400 on a Gucci sweater, that same money could be spent on stocks like Apple, Microsoft, PayPal, and those can pay me perpetually into the future. Again, a one-time transaction, but this time it means something for my future. Something that isn't temporary. I want to see more people get into the mindset of seeing money as a vehicle that can lead to more money. I want to see less people with a consumer's mindset because that's the exact mindset that's killing your bank account right now. I'm about ownership. I want to own something. How can you ever say you want to make a lot of money, you want to be good with money? How can you even speak of wealth or getting rich if you don't plan on owning nothing? Sure, you might own your clothes, shoes, TVs, and cars, but what about the companies that gave you those things? Do you know most people have little to no investments, no company shares or anything, but will run around in overpriced clothes just to show everybody how much money they got? But actually, they're showing everybody how much money they had. So let me ask you this. If everything you own is draining your bank account to the point of you having to work harder for a longer amount of time, do you own your possessions? 
or do they own you? I mean, if you're going to own an Apple computer, an iPhone, AirPods, why wouldn't you also own some Apple stock so you can actually profit from it for the rest of your life? The stock costs less than pretty much any Apple product you can get right now. Same thing for Microsoft. You see this laptop? This was made by Microsoft. You think I don't own shares of Microsoft? Think again. Here's the thing that I really wanted to bring home. That laptop I just showed you cost me $2,500. And I didn't buy it just for entertainment or for luxury. I bought it as an asset. This, this right here, I can take this anywhere I want with me and it's gonna make me money. It has more than paid for itself and it's gonna continue to do so over and over. And here's the mindset shift that had to take place for me to even make that purchase. I didn't view it as something that was too expensive. I viewed it as a vehicle to make more money. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. I really do like to have nice things, and I don't mind spending a big chunk of change on something that I like. But it won't be, the, but it won't be for the satisfaction of others. It'll be for mine. The thing for me, though, is I have rules for myself. I generally don't buy myself things for my own leisure until I feel that I've earned it. And for me to earn something nice, first of all, my assets need to be making money. I need to be able to put the same exact amount in my savings account that I always do, and I need to be able to invest the same amount I'm able to every single month without missing a beat. On top of that, I need to have money off to the side at my disposal to buy something nice without taking money out of my savings account. That's what justifies me buying something expensive that depreciates. See, I understand that there needs to be balance in life, and every now and then, I can go ahead and get myself something nice. So I make sure I plan for it, and when I do, I get exactly what I want. So if I decide one day that I want to buy a lifetime supply of these lights behind me, then so be it. If that's what I truly like, if that's what I'm truly passionate about, I'll get these lights everywhere. I will post them all throughout my apartment. Call this the lighthouse. <laughs> that, was, that was corny, my bad. But you see what I'm saying. Of course, I wouldn't do that because I don't like these lights enough to be everywhere. But you get what I'm saying. Whatever it is that I'm into, that's where my money's going. The biggest thing I want you to get out of this is having some individuality about yourself and doing things that are you. Because I absolutely refuse to do things that aren't me. I'm not a flashy person, so you're not going to see me going out being flashy trying to impress people. But I do like to have nice, expensive things. It's just the world doesn't have to know about it. You get what I'm saying? Now I'm going to break this down for you real quick. I'm going to make a quick analogy and then I'm going to make sense of the whole thing. We live in a society that tells us hustle culture is a bad thing. But in order to reach your financial goals, you got to hustle for a while. You just need to learn how to take breaks and have a seat somewhere before you pass out. You know what I'm saying? Same thing when it comes to your money. Society tells you treat yourself, but it's typically at an inconvenient time when you don't even have the money to support treating yourself. So by going through with it, you're actually screwing over your future self because you lacked the discipline to just wait to get what you wanted. And that's simply waiting until you're in a better financial situation before you spend all that money you worked so hard for. On top of that, when we talk about saving money, there's got to be a purpose for it. That's the whole reason I made this video and I'm just now getting to this. The whole idea of not buying things to save money is for one of three reasons. You're either saving money for just in case types of things like emergencies or whatnot, you're saving to invest, or you're saving for something that you want. So when you put all that into perspective, it explains exactly why I focused on the big stuff and not so much the small things. Cutting out the coffee at Starbucks, cutting back on eating out, and doing stuff like cutting your own hair like I do, sure, that'll save you some money. But the amount it saves you usually won't add a ton of significance to your life. So it's the big things that we got to take focus on as a whole. With that said, there's got to be a balance. That's why I made my last frugal living video because something I've done in the past, and I'll admit this was actually pretty recently, I pretty much went to the extreme and deprived myself of all things enjoyable just because I was so laser focused. And I quickly lost sight of things like my rest, my sanity, my mental health, and just ways to blow off steam in general. So don't take this video as you should never have a good time. Don't take this video as you should never buy anything nice for yourself. But take this video for what it actually is. A reminder that there has to be balance in your life. A reminder that we all need to view money as a resource. And as such, when the time calls for it, absolutely, you can have a great time with your resources. You can buy yourself something nice with your resources. Instead of doing what I did, which was not doing anything altogether. Just remember, when it comes to spending your money, make sure you never spend money on things that won't make you happy or things that you know for a fact that you don't want to do. And never spend your money to impress others because at that point, you don't have money. Your money has you and you don't want those problems. 
I promise you. Anyways, this is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.